So very distinctive. Uh, that's going to be in the genus Peristodion. Uh, difficult to ID to, to species. Uh, but yeah, that's a common name for that is uh, sea robins. And you can get a sense here that the uh, sediments we're seeing, these carbonate sediments, are a bit coarser than uh, the pelagic sediments we've seen, been seeing on deeper previous dives, and that's likely a function of the um, higher currents that occur in this area, sweeping away the finer grain particles and uh, leaving behind this coarser uh, substrate or coarser uh, sediment deposit. Yeah, and I talked about the previous dives that have targeted um, sinkholes. Of course, not this sinkhole. This is completely right. unexplored area, but they noted something very similar in terms of uh, swarms and really dense aggregations of fishes. Get that shrimp. Go ahead. And yeah, that looks like mantis shrimp. Do lasers on it a bit. Copy that. Oh, Kevin, any idea uh, on the genus? Come in tight. Lasers clear. Yeah. Come on out. And for uh, those who've been watching over the last number of dives, you can see a a real distinction here between uh, the mode of propulsion for these fish versus some of the deeper sea uh, cuscule type fish that we've been seeing. These these fish here have a much more high energy uh, rapid movement of a tail as opposed to those cuscule type organisms that had the, the full body undulation uh, at very slow rates. Uh, and of course, as, uh, as, as Dan has mentioned, that, that reflects the amount of energy in the environment uh, and the um, in those deeper waters, those organisms needing to have a very low low energy means of propulsion, whereas here in these shallower waters, we see a much more high energy uh, motion in these small fish. I'm going to keep coming around, Don. Excellent. And Kevin uh, has chimed in here as we got that good close-up of that elongate uh, barracuda. And so he's uh, updated us that it's Lycidium atlanticum. So, yeah, thanks, uh, Kevin. Appreciate that ID. Yeah, that's a Barracudina um, paralipidae, and the other species, Lestrolepis intermedia, is the one that has the black spot right in front of the eye. So that's a quick telltale between those two species. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. And I, I think what we're looking at here is a species in the genus Bemprops. And a species in the genus Abrelia, the squid. Excellent, yeah. I think we're going to be very busy with IDs. There's a lot of things here, and yeah, very exciting start of the dive. Sure this fish is if we can get a close-up of the uh, lateral line on that Bembrox, whether it drops or drops uh, uh, gradually, we can tell the difference between the two. Also see a long uh, elongate filament there at the end of the mandible. Um, I need to double check between the two species which is which, but there's two species, and that's the the differing differentiating, differentiating factors. Excellent, yeah, thank you. So yeah, these are commonly known as duck uh, duckbill flatheads. Is that what he was asking? Uh, for? We've uh, caught them on tape on several of the previous dives, uh, you know, as deep as about 700 meters. Uh, Go ahead in. We 
get this fish again to come in tight. And yeah, I think this is another one of these uh, Barracudinas. Uh, Listerium Atlanticum. bigger squid out there in the back. A really nice shot of a squid there. That looks like an Ilex Coendetii, which is one that uh, we haven't seen on this cruise, and it's um, it's it's common in the Gulf of Mexico, but not along the east coast. Um, there's another species, Elisabrosis, that we see commonly along the east coast. Uh, but there is uh, in this area, there's sort of a mixed uh, that. It's a third species that might be a hybrid of the other two. It's called Ilex oxygonius. And this yeah, could be right. that as well. So we're getting good, good squid. Excellent, yeah. And there's an interesting comment here. So, yeah, Mike, you had pointed out that we have a number of vertical migrators here in the sinkhole. And, uh, and there's a lot of literature about vertical migrators yeah. being trapped on the top of seamounts. And, and Tina Molotsova had pointed that just out. Right here. So this might be the same phenomena that we have a, an aggregation here just based on uh, the, the migrators being trapped in that area. Plastic. Right, coming up. Uh, this fish right here. Is this a juvenile Merlucius albidus? Mm. That looks like an areoma to me. Yeah. yeah. Throughout all of the dives that we've done here on the West Florida escarpment including some of the deeper ones. Those teeth. Viper fish. Viper fish. this real quick. That is shell inside. So there we have some debris, uh, a plastic bottle, but it appears to have uh, maybe a mollusk shell inside of it. That's very strange. <laughs> Looks like uh, it could be a hermit crab too, I, or uh, I don't know. Hard to say. Yeah, and there's I think either an anemone growing on top, or a uh, I think that's a hermit crab. Oh, yeah, there's something growing on top of that shell. Crab, Looks like an anemone. Hermit crab in a portable cave.
going to run the lasers for a little bit. Zoom sure. in here. Yeah, and there we clearly had a, a, a hermit cramp. Yeah, so a very exciting start of a dive. Uh, definitely uh, abundance of fish that we haven't documented on today's, uh, on this expedition. It is unfortunately the last uh, dive of, uh, of this expedition, but uh, we'll have uh, plenty of time to explore this habitat. Uh, because it is a shallower dive, uh, we we'll, won't have to come off the seafloor until after four o'clock uh, central time. So, uh, if the conditions permit, we'll, we'll have another full six hours of exploration here. This is another squid if you want to go in. 